right, everybody, let's talk about the fine art of constructing a TNG collar. And you can see I have four cuts here. I have the collar itself. I have a collar cut out of muslin, a collar cut out of sew-in interfacing, and the collar lining. And I'll explain how I like to use these, how I like to construct my collars shortly. But first I want to point out that the collar was a little bit different on front zipping garments and back zipping garments. On front zipping garments, the collar started at the center front, wrapped around the back of the neck, and extended all the way to the other center front. These included the, uh, the front zipping TNG jumpsuits and the later formal uniforms that we saw in the Deep Space Nine to Nemesis era. And also the, uh, the later TNG Admiral jackets um, had a similar collar, but it had a center back seam for some reason. But it functioned as a one-piece collar. But the back zipping garments had a two-piece collar. All right, so they had a left side and a right side, and they were separate pieces. Um, these included the back zipping TNG jumpsuits, the TNG jackets, the TNG Admiral jackets that we saw in seasons three, four, and five, and that one little hiccup in season six, and um, the TNG cadet jumpsuits and their successors, the uh, Voyager cadet jumpsuits. Now, everything we're about to cover um, in terms of constructing a collar is the same on every garment that I just mentioned, whether it's a front zipping or back zipping garment. Uh, although the actual method of attaching the collar to the garment varies, you know, from garment to garment, and we'll cover those individually, but actually constructing the collar is the same process. Now, I think the most important element of constructing a proper collar is interfacing. And you want your collar to be stiff and crisp, right? Like a uniform. Um, you don't want it pulling and, and flapping around and, and wrinkling. I mean, that just screams cheap costume, right? And, and uh, I don't want a cheap costume. Um, I hope you don't either. If you're if you if you want that cheap costume look, then you're watching the wrong video. Um, I want something that looks like an authentic uniform, right? Like legit. And the trick is to stiffen the collar using interfacing without bulking up the seam allowances. Okay, so a crisp collar is good, but bulking up the seam allowances is bad. And we want the good without the bad. Right? We want it all. Wait, no we don't. We only want the good. We want the good. We want all the good. <laughs> That's what I meant. And I'll show you a few different options for how to achieve this. And you can decide for yourself which works best for you. What you think looks best as an end result. And... I mean, really, how, how much work you want to do, or are willing to do. I personally am a perfectionist and overachiever, and I will pretty much always go for what I think looks best as an end result. Um, but that, not, that might not be how you roll, and that's okay, right? Or maybe you have a con tomorrow, <laughs> and um, you just need to go make a costume, um, Take every shortcut you possibly can. You're already pulling an all-nighter. You don't need to be spending any more time than you absolutely have to. And that's okay. Or maybe you're just lazy. So whatever. But um, so you can decide for yourself. And, and I'll talk you through a few different methods here. But regardless, what I like to do first is stabilize the collar with a fusible, a lightweight fusible. Especially if you're making the uh, the TNG jumpsuits with the spandex collars, and that's what this is right here, using the jumbo spandex. And I do this to stabilize it because, especially with the spandex collars, you don't want it stretching and contorting and doing weird stuff while you're trying to make it and attach it to the garment. I mean, it's just a pain in the ass. So I just stabilize it with a lightweight fusible. Now, I don't recommend what I'm about to tell you, but you might be able to get away with using only a fusible interfacing on your collar. It's certainly better than nothing. Um, especially if you're using a heavyweight fusible 
then you might be able to get away with that. Um, and again, I don't recommend using just a fusible. I, I like to start with a fusible, but if you're going to use only fusible, what I recommend doing is actually um, applying a second layer of fusible right on top of the first layer, but trim away the seam allowances, right? So in this case, we have 5 8 inch seam allowance. So I would say trim away 3 quarters of an inch and then apply that second layer of fusible to the underside of the collar without the seam allowances. You remember how I mentioned that we don't want to bulk up our seam allowances? Well, just clip them out and then you should have a sturdier collar without having the crazy bulk in the seam allowances. So, you know, the more heavyweight the fusible, the better. But that's my least favorite way of doing this. I like to start with a lightweight fusible just to stabilize it. And then I like to use a sew-in fusible, which is what this is. So if you're going to use fusible, you know, maybe start with the lightweight and apply a second heavyweight layer or just experiment, see what looks best. I mean, if you're just dead set on fusible, then, you know, just uh, experiment with the weights and figure out what you think looks best. But um, definitely trim those seam allowances out of the second layer. So, like I said, I like to use a sew-in fusible. Um, the heavier and sturdier... I'm a sew-in fusible, a sew-in interfacing, sorry. And I like to use a, a nice, sturdy, heavy sew-in interfacing. Anything um, sturdy will do, really. What I'm using right here is uh, heavyweight white collar interfacing from B Black & Sons, just because I have it. I had some sitting around, and I'm using it. It works great. Um, but I have here a B Black & Sons swatch booklet that they sent me. And they have a bunch of different options that will work. Right, here's heavyweight Hymo. That one's a pretty good one. They have um, this 100% linen canvas. That's another good one. French collar canvas. That's a great one. And they have a more heavyweight version of that. Here it's called heavyweight fine linen canvas, but um, it's also called heavyweight French canvas or heavyweight French collar canvas. This stuff is fantastic. And if you don't have any interfacing, I would... Uh, recommend going with this one, all things being equal, depending on your budget or, or what you're wanting to do. This would be my pick, but this is, this is great stuff too. Um, heavyweight white collar interfacing, also from B Black & Sons. Now I will say, for the later uniforms, uh, the formal uniforms from the Deep Space Nine to Nemesis era, if you're making the Captain or Admiral versions, definitely go with the white heavyweight collar interfacing, because you don't want to use anything like this color underneath the white fabric because there might be a slight degree of discoloration <laughs> under the um, under the collar like this stuff it's obviously not white it might darken your white just a little bit to be kind of unsightly now if you're making the the version with the gray collar the officer version or any of the TNG garments with the black or um, red collars. Basically anything but a white collar. These are great. But I would not use these underneath the white collar of the later version of the um, formal uniform. So I'm using this because I have some sitting around. It works great. And um, I like to cut the collar with the center back on the bias. I'm just It's generally a good idea to cut any kind of a curved edge or curved seam line you know on the bias so it's more malleable and, you know, I figure it couldn't hurt, right? I don't know how much of a difference it actually makes on this. But, um, you know, it's generally good practice. And like I said, it couldn't hurt. At this point, you could... Let me get the lining and the muslin out of the way. You could actually just take your sew-in interfacing and attach it to the collar. But then we run into the same problem that I was mentioning, or that I mentioned earlier, about bulking up your seam allowances, right? So that's not good. So I'll show you a really cool trick that I first learned from my friend Michael Cowart and I've since read about in um, an excellent book called uh, Cool Couture by Kenneth King that Michael Cowart actually recommended to me. It's a fantastic book. I definitely recommend it if you are wanting to um, expand your 
your sewing skills, uh, add more tricks to your uh, you know bag of tricks. What it involves is using a layer of muslin as a carrier layer for the interfacing. So you cut a layer of muslin and obviously on the collar, that's really not going to make very much difference, right? You're probably not even going to know it's there. It's what we call underlining. Also called flatlining. Some people call it flatlining, right? It, and what that means is you just cut another piece that's just going to sit underneath um, the actual shell fabric. Okay, so you cut one out of muslin and you use that as a carrier layer for the interfacing. So what we'll do is attach the interfacing to the muslin except for the seam allowances. Right, so these seam allowances will be trimmed away and then attach that to the collar. It's a brilliant trick. I wish I could take credit for this trick, but I can't. I can take credit for reading it. But anyway, so we attach this, and there are two ways that you can do this. Well, there are probably a lot more, but I'll show you two different ways that I like to do this. And you can just pick, you can pick one of them, and, um, and then we'll attach that to the collar. Okay, so here are the two methods for anchoring the collar interfacing to the collar underlining that I mentioned before. And I'll go ahead and explain exactly what it is you're looking at. Um, and I'll start with the one on top here. So the first thing you want to do is mark just inside the seam line on your underlining, on the muslin layer. All right, so I've done this in red marker, so you can see it very easily. And with 5 8 inch seam allowance, you want to mark just inside that 5 8 inch stitch line all the way around the perimeter of the collar underlining. Then do the same thing on the collar interfacing. Okay? And the next step is to trim away the seam allowances on the collar interfacing just inside of that mark. All right? So if this was our collar interfacing, what you want to do is trim a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch just inside of that mark all the way around the collar interfacing. So our interfacing is now smaller than the underlining and it should actually sit just inside of the line that we marked for reference. Just like this you can see here the edge of the interfacing is just inside of the red seam allowance I marked earlier. All right, And pin this into place and you can go over it with your machine um, with a zigzag stitch with the outer edge of the zigzag stitch just outside of the edge of the interfacing. So this uh, leg of the stitch catches both layers and this one just catches the muslin underlining. So you just go around. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Look, I flubbed the corners. It doesn't really matter. All we're doing is just anchoring the interfacing to the underlining. Okay. And um, a couple tips here. If you're making the white collar on the later Deep Space Nine to Nemesis here, a formal uniform, definitely use the white interfacing, just like I mentioned earlier. But also uh, use white muslin, right? Not the uh, unbleached stuff that I'm using now. And when you mark the uh, seam allowance on the underlining, I definitely recommend don't use marker. <laughs> definitely don't use red marker. I did that just so you could see it. Um, use a disappearing ink fabric marker all the way around, and don't use black thread either. Use white thread, right? So everything's white. And then once you're finished with this, um, give it a light misting to make that marker go away because you don't want to see any red marker on the right side of the collar. And, I mean, you can, look, you can barely see it at all on the wrong side of the muslin underlining but you'll definitely be able to see that black thread through a white collar, right? That's just going to be hideous. So if you use white thread, though, you're good. So again, if you're making that white collar, use uh, white muslin, white thread, and only lightly mark, and then make sure it disappears. 
just to avoid anything unsightly, unsightly on the right side of that collar. Now if you're making a gray collar or a black collar or a uh, division colored collar, then it's fine. No one's ever going to see it anyway. But um, for the white collar, definitely take every precaution to make sure nothing shows through on the right side of the collar. All right, so that's method number one. Method number two is to use the um, collar interfacing as is, and you can see here the uh, muslin underlining is underneath, and what you do is baste the interfacing to the underlining seven eighths of an inch from the edge around the perimeter. All right, seven eighths. And then once it's attached, use your scissors and carefully trim away just the interfacing all the way around. All right, and you'll find that with scissors, you'll only be able to get to about an eighth of an inch from that stitch line. Anyway, you might be able to get closer if you're using, um, you know, very fine, sharp, fancy scissors, but just about an eighth of an inch is fine. And then the edge of your interfacing will be about three quarters of an inch from the edge of the collar with a five eighth inch uh, seam line you're still good to go because the edge of your interfacing is three quarters of an inch in, which is an eighth of an inch inside that seam line. All right, so it doesn't really matter which one um, you do because you end up with the same thing. You end up with a muslin underlining and collar interfacing anchored to it with no collar interfacing bulking up the seam allowances. Okay, so I'll go ahead and trim these seam allowances away just so you can see what the end result of this looks like. Okay, so we time hopped again, and I've gone ahead and trimmed away the seam allowances from the collar interfacing, but not the collar underlining. Now when you're cutting, make sure you only cut through the interfacing, not the underlining, right? This layer will only fold back so far while you're cutting, so make sure you don't accidentally catch this, right? That's probably the riskiest part of this method. It's faster and it's easier, but you do have that risk of cutting through both layers when you trim away because they're already attached when you go to cut. Whereas with this method, the interfacing is already cut when you go to attach it to the underlying, right? But I mean, if you're, if, if you know what you're doing and you have some experience, it's really a minimal risk, but it's there. And I just wanted to give you a heads up, make sure you only cut through this layer, but you can see that the end result is basically the same. You have a muslin underlining and you have a layer of nice sturdy interfacing that will stiffen the collar but that interfacing does not extend into the seam allowances which is wonderful now uh the tips for the white collar that i give you up here definitely apply to uh this as well if you're making the white collar use white muslin and use white thread to make sure you know you don't get any unsightly mess on the uh, right side of the white collar otherwise it doesn't matter all right, so the next step is to anchor this interfacing slash underlining assembly to the actual collar, okay, on the wrong side. So here's the collar. What we do is position this assembly directly onto the underside of the collar with all the edges flush and baste an eighth of an inch inside the seam line all the way around the perimeter all right so if your seam allowance is five eighths of an inch then you'll want to do it a half inch from the edge all the way around if it's like three eighths of an inch or, or whatever you know that would be a quarter inch so an eighth of an inch inside the seam line you want to get as close to the seam line as possible um, to anchor these layers but at the same time um, you don't want to run the risk of accidentally deviating from that seam line when you attach the collar and then your um, basting stitch be visible. If you're very brave, do it right on the, uh, right on the stitch line, five eighths of an inch from the edge. But I like to have a little safety margin and do it a half inch inside. So go ahead and do that. Um, I will do it and then I'll show you what the finished collar assembly looks like. Okay, another time hop, and here we are. I've basted the interfacing slash underlining assembly to the collar a half inch from the edges along the entire collar perimeter. And now we have a nice stiff collar without the interfacing extending into the seam allowances. 
And this is what it looks like with the uh, second method that I showed you. And you can see, you basically end up with the same thing. It's just a matter of how the interfacing is anchored to the underlining. And it doesn't matter. Now I should mention that um, if you want to, you can make kind of a pouch. So you, like with a, another layer of muslin. So you have your underlining layer, then the interfacing, and then you can have another muslin layer on top of that or inside of that. And then what you have is kind of your interfacing sewn into a pouch and then attach that pouch to um, the underside of the collar. But I don't really see the need to, uh, to do that. I mean, the stitching isn't going to be aggravated in any way and the collar is lined. So the only possible advantage, um, well, there are two. You could um, possibly put this interfacing inside of a pouch and then sew it closed and not have to sew the interfacing to the muslin. But that's not really much trouble to do, so you're not really saving a lot of time there. And the other potential advantage is that the second layer of muslin might give the collar just a hair more uh, weight. But I don't think you'll even notice. Um, and I really don't think you'll miss it if it's, if it's not there. Um, if I did it on one and didn't do it on the other one and you felt the two, I'm not even convinced that you would know which one had the extra um, layer. So... I just wanted to throw that out there though, if you wanted to make a pouch. That is another, you know, really cool way to implement this trick. So again, thank you Michael for teaching me that. And um, definitely check out Kenneth King's book, Cool Couture. There are lots of cool tricks in that book. So you just saw how the interface collar looks on the front zipping garments using the technique I just showed you. And this is how it looks on the two-piece collar used on the back zipping garments. And it's basically the same thing except for on the two-piece collar, we trim the collar interfacing away from that center back edge, so when it comes time to fold that seam allowance under, it'll fold nice and easily without that stiff collar interfacing fighting you on the fold line. So just trim it away from the center back, and other than that, it's the same process. Also, I want to show you this cool collar variation. Now, as you might recall, in the Season 3 episode, Yesterday's Enterprise, the uniforms that we saw in that alternate timeline were a little bit different. They had these cool kind of military style sleeve cuffs and a different style collar. It wasn't the Mandarin style collar that we normally saw in the proper timeline or, or prime timeline or whatever you want to call it. Um, it was a wraparound collar. Now, if you look at the wraparound collar, it looks a lot like the um, collar that we saw in the front zipping garments, but there's one big difference. And that's that the center of the collar is actually the center front. Now, if it was a front zipping collar or a collar for a front zipping garment, this would be the center back and these outer edges would kind of taper into that rounded Mandarin style collar look. But this is the center front and these outer edges are the center back. So this is the center front. Other than that, they're the same basic uh, construction and interfacing, right? So we have our collar fabric, which I stabilized with a fusible. We have our muslin underlining and our collar interfacing. So you construct it the same way, and this is how it looks for that yesterday's Enterprise collar variant. Before we move on to the piping, let me go ahead and mention that if you're making a collar out of a woven fabric, you can go ahead and serge this lower edge. I forgot to mention it before now because I'm working with spandex at the moment, which doesn't need it, but if you're working with the wool gabardine, um, or cotton twill if you're going that route, then um, you can go ahead and serge this lower edge to um, protect it against you know fraying and unraveling while you're working with it. Um, or you can wait and do it once the piping is attached and then catch the piping in the overlock stitch too, if you would rather do it then. But I like to go ahead and do it uh, just so I'm not getting those little pokey threads and everything while I'm um, working with the collar and uh, the collar lining and attaching the collar and all that. So. Woven fabric, go ahead and search now, and then do the piping. So the next step for our TNG collars kind of varies from garment to garment, but generally speaking, this is the point at which you would attach your division colored piping along the top edge. And I'll go ahead and show you how to do that, but that's not what you do for all garments. Like on some of the, uh, like a, an admiral jacket that had the gold piping that goes across the collar and all the way down the front, you wouldn't do that right at this specific moment. But I'll show you how to attach the piping for the garments that you uh, do do that. And be sure to check out the individual garment tutorials just to make sure you're doing this at the right time.
Now when attaching the division colored piping, I like to cut it a little bit longer than I think I'm going to need it. You see I have some overhanging each end here, because it can be difficult to really determine exactly how much you need, even if you, you know, measure it pretty precisely or pin it or something, sometimes you might lose some around these curves, or sometimes it might contract a little bit once you stitch it because of the tension in the stitch. And you don't want to start on one end and then get to the other end and then, you know, be just a little bit short. That wouldn't be good. So I like to cut it a little bit longer, stitch it, and then once it's attached, then I'll trim it down to size and um, apply some liquid fray preventer to these ends to keep them from, you know, unraveling uh, all, all the way up. And it will get sewn into... Um, into the neckline seam, so that will offer some additional protection. But um, when you attach the piping, make sure you use a, uh, a zipper foot, um, also sometimes called like an edging foot or a piping foot, to get right up there, right underneath the actual cord, right, and go through all layers. In this case, uh, 5 eighths of an inch from the edge. And again, before attaching the piping, make sure you check out the individual um, garment tutorial to make sure this is the right time to do it because sometimes you might want to attach the piping in a different step. I'm just talking about how to construct a general collar. Okay, so if it's the right time to attach the piping, use that uh, zipper piping foot, go along the edge, and then once you're ready, go ahead and just clip it off the ends there. Like that. So trim it down to size, and then apply some liquid fray prevent preventer to those ends. And I don't want to get this stuff on my ironing table, so I just stick some old ribbon spools that I don't care about underneath, just to make sure I don't gunk up my, my table. So apply this stuff. Oops, I didn't get quite to the edge there. Let me trim this a little more. There we go. So apply your liquid fray preventer. I like to give it a good liberal dose there. Really seal those uh, ends. And then once that's dry, you can move on to whatever the next step is in your garment. Um, for, for some garments, it might be actually attaching it as is. For some, you might have skipped the piping altogether for now. For some, you'll want to attach the collar lining. For some, you might need to attach the lining and leave the bottom most 5 eighths of an inch free. So check out the individual tutorials to make sure you know what to do next. And I'll show you what a finished lined collar assembly looks like as soon as this dries. Okay, so I've gone ahead and lined this collar just for the hell of it, just so you can see what a, uh, a finished lined collar assembly will look like. But you probably wouldn't attach the lining at this step if you're making an actual uniform. So be sure to check out uh, your specific uniform tutorial to make sure um, you're lining it at the right time. But you can see here, I've just put the lining face down on top of the collar assembly and sewn right over the previous stitch line. And now what you want to do next is trim that seam allowance down to about a quarter inch all the way around. Just like that. And actually you might want to get more like an eighth of an inch along that front curve because you want it to turn and um, have a nice gentle curve without any seam allowance kind of complicating things. All right, so there's all that and I made a mess. Clean that up. So we've trimmed the seam allowances, and now what we want to do is press this lining to the underside. To do this, I like to use a uh, tailor's ham. 
it a little bit at a time. I like to do it from the underside, obviously, since um, I'm pressing the lining under. And if your iron has a shoe, um, I would say go ahead and use the shoe to make sure you don't scorch um, your lining or especially your piping. You don't want it to be like super uh, shiny or whatever, right? Inappropriately. And maybe give it a press from the right side. Ooh, hot. And here we are with a finished TNG style collar assembly. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.